God bless you guys. It's Prophetess Kimberly Moses. How you guys doing today? It is a cold, cold day in South Carolina. How's everybody doing? Come in and heart me up and uh, begin to share. God, God bless you, Lashana. Good to see you. How are you doing this morning? Good to see you. Let me know where you're watching me from so I can shout you out. Amen. How you doing, Prentice? How you doing, Tricia? How you doing? Good to see you guys. Amen. How you doing? Good to see you guys. Hi, husband. Good to see you, Tron. All right. Good to see you guys. How you doing, sister? Good to see you, Tasha. Good to see you guys. So, you guys, it is early in the morning. Uh, decided, you know, while waiting, waiting for, you know, the post office to open i wanted to how you doing for jules hanneberg good to see you from africa yes god bless you i decided to let me come on here and do some teaching give you guys some updates um so much is going on amen i want to do a little teaching from my newest book the abcs of the prophetic prophetic characteristics amen i'm going to tell you guys why um i want to steer you up also uh your gift inside of you so we got a lot to cover and a lot to talk about amen so i pray you take notes all right so write a chapter you know you get an opportunity to write a chapter in one of my upcoming books uh it's going to be like book number 20 amen it's going to be released march 2019 uh the name of the book is called it cost me everything it cost me everything it's going to be a great evangelistic tool i cannot wait to see what god uh does through this book many lives are going to be changed and impacted for the kingdom so i'm excited all right so you can go to my website check that out prophetsk.org and i'm excited it's a lot of uh, great opportunities that's going to come out of that school of the prophets uh training starts next month the first thursday in the month it's three months training program with me uh, i've been doing it for uh going about about three years now uh, i think this is class number six or seven i'm excited about that i love to see people's lives transform so okay awesome thank you yes you finished my book you don't leave me a room. like he's some atm you know but god is not a atm all right prayer is two-way communication with the father and as we pray you know to god guess what as we pray to god we need to listen i always encourage people to listen you know many times i'm out here pouring out every day every day six o'clock you know we're doing um uh, tongues of fire if you have not called tongues of fire you need to get there because your life is going to shift we pray in our heavenly language and some people are on here that join us every morning for tongues of fire you know we're praying in tongues for an, an hour and then we're noticing it's not hard to tap in and hear the voice of god it's not hard to go out there and you know uh, operate in the supernatural through the holy spirit uh and we see the signs and wonders follow it's not hard some people when they first start praying and on tongues of fire they couldn't even pray in tongues for like five minutes you know but isn't your life shifting you know uh lashana's on here i know she joins every morning very faithful and some other people my life shift amen since i decided to start praying in tongues for one hour a day amen it's not a struggle for me to prophesy it's not a struggle for me to go lay hands on the sick and get results it's not a struggle amen for me to hear the voice of god you know i can hear god throughout the day i can be in my car and god's talking to me i can be washing dishes and i'm hearing the voice of god amen so and then also at 12 o'clock noon every day we're praying uh you know out of one of my books let me see if i have the book to show you amen we're praying out of one of my books i think it's the second book i wrote daily prayers that bring changes we're praying out of the book every single day and our life is shifting amen uh, let me just pull out this book, Daily Prayers That Bring Changes. We pray out this book every single day at noon, amen, for, for this season. And our life is shifting. So, yes, God's presence is stronger on our lives when we begin to pray, amen. It's like you're setting up an altar in your life, a prayer altar. And it's going to attract the presence of God even more stronger in your life. So, 
the tongues of fire call is monday through friday at 6 a.m eastern standard time amen we take our communion daily and i give the word of the lord uh on, on a daily basis amen so i said intercessors arise many people don't want to pray no more you know they just want to hear a, a good word hoop and holler and go home still bound amen but real change begins in prayer whenever you saw a, a great move of god or a revival and revival if you study revival history you see it was birthed in prayer amen and there's a move of god yesterday was on this uh i think the 12 o'clock call and prophecy began to come out of my mouth amen and when i begin to prophesy my mind gets cut off and i don't know what's coming out my mouth uh because i have built my faith level up to where i say god fill my mouth and he will fill it i don't even worry about what i should say so the word of the lord that came out yesterday was just going to be a great outpouring a great revival uh in the southwest region of the u.s texas and louisiana it's going to be someone that's emerging someone that doesn't have a big name um it's not going to be through a, a mega church amen and we're going to hear about it on the news and the, it's going to be back to back meetings and we're going to hear about it so it's a great outpouring coming because yesterday i began my eyes begin to open up and i begin to see uh just like oil and a, a great outpouring of the spirit of god coming upon that region i feel the fire of god in in my belly even as i uh, even as I, I proclaimed this out this morning all right so god he is calling people to stand in the gap so why am i passionate about prayer and and, and encouraging other people about praying because it's important um this this church right here and i, I, I try not to cry because it breaks my heart this is a backslidden church a powerless church some of you guys you can't even pray a, a headache away you know and it, it grieves the heart of God you know where's your power if you want power amen through the Holy Spirit you got to pray you got to pray amen you got to pray some of us we're, we're, we're lost we're confused we're bound but there's freedom today there's deliverance today so I think I, I, I call this title Intercessors Arise. Amen. If you say you're a prophet, if you're in any of the fivefold offices, you got to pray. Prayer should be the backbone of your ministry. Every day we're going to go through attacks. There's witches out there that's on a hunt. Uh, they're trying to destroy ministries and putting word curses uh, against the people of God. And where's your prayer life? When you pray, God will give you a strategy. When you pray, God will give you a heads up on the enemy. When you begin to pray, amen, you have some more of his anointing, more power in your life. And the enemy can't touch you. You'll be untraceable in the spirit or the enemy cannot penetrate your life. I don't care what he tries to do. So God is calling us to pray. God is looking for someone that's going to stand in the gap. God is looking for someone that's going to fight, amen, and war in the spirit. There's so much to pray about. You know, every day we cut on the news, we see people dying. We see people getting shot up. We see all kind of crazy stuff. We see an attack on christianity we see attack on churches we see so much to pray for we see a lot of confusion a lot of perversion you know so you're trying to tell me there's nothing to pray for there's so much to pray for out here amen so god is not coming back you know jesus is not coming back for a powerless church his bride amen he's coming back for his bride that's going to be perfected amen has some anointing amen it's going to be polish it up and ready we got to be ready amen so we were created prophets prophets are great intercessors they can hear the voice of god they can feel his heartbeat prophets you were born to be an intercessor there's a connection and you know i, I want to encourage everybody to pray but i'm talking to prophets right now there's a special connection you know between prophets and, and, and god prophets are the friends of god amen i'm gonna say it again prophets are the friends of god even if you have a prophetic anointing 
You should be able to tap into the heart of God and say, God, what do you want me to pray for today? God, what's on your heart? I asked God that. I said, God, what's on your heart? And I'm not the kind of prophet that posts stuff on my social media uh, to try to say how accurate I am. That's not what I do. Amen. Because some of the things God showed me, it, it freaks me out when it comes to past. I'm telling my husband, babe, babe. And I'm putting the phone in his face and he'll tell you. I'm like, babe, this came to pass, babe. God told me this, babe, you know. And I'll tell the people on the prayer line just some of the prophecies. But I'm not that kind of prophet that will just post stuff on social media. But I said one day last week, I said, God, what's on your heart? You know, or, or two weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago. And I need to really start writing down the dates, you know, because I'm bad for just not writing down dates. Um, yes, yeah, somebody put my prayer line number up. I said, God, what's on your heart? And he said, there's going to be a train shooting in Chicago. And that came to pass recently. And then he said, it's going to be a derailing. A train is going to be derailed on the river. So I've been like interceding for the people of God, you know, and when these prophecies come to pass, it, it, it kind of like shakes me up. So I'm like, wow, God, you know, you trust me this much to allow me to pray and to stand in the gap. And that's what intercession is about. It's not about putting the information that you receive in the, in the, you know, in your prayer closet out there and saying, I'm accurate. This person died, da, 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 you know, no, it's about, um, praying and interceding so the plans of the enemy are thwarted the plans of the enemy are frustrated this is what intercession is about so you're playing you're praying the the agenda of god you're praying god's plans and purposes to be manifested in the earth you're praying come on god's will to be done in the earth this is what intercession is about it's not about making you richer more famous or are just about you is about play, praying excuse me praying god's mind god's heart god's will in people's life see anyone can come to god and pray you know sometimes you don't know what to pray you you, you pray um you know scriptures but intercession is a deeper realm intercession is a deeper um level i should say i should say amen intercession god will take you into somebody's room you'll hear the whole conversation you'll have a glimpse behind the scene and you'll know things about someone you know private information about someone's life and you're like god why why, why are you showing me this because god trusts you what are you going to do with the information pray you know, God will show you someone that's struggling, you know, and maybe sexual sin or something like that. Not for you to put them on blast so you can pray, pray for them. You know, uh, God showed me this evangelist, um, I think it's about two, three years ago. And I think I, I came on here and I told you guys about my encounter, my experiences. Uh, and I think I named it Visionary Assignments. Amen. For one season... I kept getting and I, I still get them sometimes um but I called it visionary assignments and this was a level of intercession that God gave me an assignment to pray for uh, an individual so uh, one day I was on my couch and when I when I was in my wilderness season in Colorado Springs and you know I was kind of asleep about to doze off and then I saw a lady's face flash before my eyes and then I saw that she was pregnant and I was like whoa and she looked so real like she was standing like you know in my living room and then i said like, god who's this and then i heard her name evangelist blank 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 i was like what and then i was like who is this and he was like you need to pray for her now because she's highly depressed because the father of her baby don't want to be in her life or something like that I'm like what so i was like okay so i began to pray for her um, and then I looked her up. I had no connection to her whatsoever. We weren't even friends on Facebook. And I looked her up and she looked exactly like I saw. She looked exactly like I saw. She just had a baby. Her name was spelled the same way. I was like, wow. And then I messaged her. I said, this might sound crazy, but God told me who you were. He gave me your name and told me what's going on. And she's like, what? She's like, well, it's true. And she said at that moment when I messaged her, 
she was praying in her the holy spirit praying in tongues crying because she was broken she was devastated so she was my assignment for a season you know here was this backslidden evangelist she had a baby out of wedlock but God still loved her. God still cared about her. And she went broken in, in repentance. A uh, spirit of repentance came upon her. And um, I was able to pick her up in the spirit and, and pray for her. You know, because if I didn't pick her up in the spirit, and this is why we have to be watchmen on the wall. This is why we have to stand in the gap. Because if I didn't pray for her, she probably would have committed suicide. You know, she probably would uh maybe hurt herself or hurt the baby you know so this is what intercession is about i didn't put it on my facebook you know and say god told me this and this and that that, that, that. i didn't bash the lady you know i prayed for her i i weeped over her i shed tears over her because i know how it feels you know to have people walk out your life i know how it feels to have people reject you i know how it feels to be a single mother you don't feel good so God is calling us to uh, be intercessors. Amen. God wants us to go higher in prayer. He wants us to go higher in him, period. He never wanted us. I, I gave a word today uh, on the prayer line and I told us, you know, God wants us to evolve. We're, we need to change. We, we, he never meant for us to stay the same, to stay stuck, to stay bound. He wants us to grow. And the same thing with prayer and intercession. He wants us to grow. Amen. My husband wrote a book. Y'all get his book. It's called The Power of Intercession. Um, God began to show him things. When he said, God, I'm going to go all the way with you. God began to... Let me switch arms. This arm getting a little tired. God began to show him things. Uh, he began to hear conversations. When he began to pursue God, he began to hear... Uh, just receiving warnings amen so he can pray against it this is why god calls us to intercede because god wants to give us uh warnings amen to stand in the gap for his people all right so like i said before and i'm going to say it again if you're a prophet you know you are called to be an intercessor and some of us are intercessors but we're not prophets and that's okay amen you know but guess what Many people feel like, you know, to be a prophet, all you do is prophesy, but your your whole ministry, if you really want to know the truth, is going to be spent in prayer. Amen? See, most of the prophets, uh, a true prophet of God, I'm not talking about a self-sent prophet, I'm not talking about someone that, um, you know, has the title but not the function. A true prophet, they're going to spend most of their ministry behind the scenes in prayer i don't care you know I, I can't function without prayer i start getting the attitude i start getting grieved and vexed like oh I, I got to pull back i gotta go seek the face of god you know as many times as i pour out as much as i pour out i need god to pour back into me amen so i'm pouring out six o'clock i'm pouring out 12 o'clock so you know sometime throughout the day i need to say hey god fill me back up i need to hear the voice of god i need to feel the presence of god you know i need to feel his his fire i need to receive something so as you begin to go into a level of intercession you notice that sometimes the spirit of travail will come upon you and what is the spirit of travail this is when you begin to groan out the holy spirit begins to groan out with inside of you with utterances that can't be understood and you be like you know you just don't know and then your eyes and the spirit will begin to open and then you might get information about an individual or what's to come and you'll be like oh my god for real and some of the stuff might go over your head you may not understand it it may not even make sense to you but that don't even matter god is looking at for someone that's gonna you know stand in the gap and pray against it for example like the earthquakes the fires um tornadoes whatever it could be natural disasters and assassination attempts you know sh uh, terrorist attacks you know something we need to be standing in the gap god will show you all of it he will show you all of it so when things begin to manifest on the news it's not a surprise to you amen you be like i already knew that god already told me that because you have a relationship with him you have a deeper connection with him and god's going to trust you 
with the information. He's going to trust you. Amen. That, okay, if I give them this information, they're going to pray. They're going to make themselves productive. They're going to make themselves more useful. And they're going to they're going to pray on behalf of others. They're going to pray for the nations. They're going to pray over this information. They're going to be a good steward over the information I have given them. The information that I have released to them. That's what God's going to do. Amen. So when we intercede, we're coming against the attacks of the enemy. Every day. The enemy is throwing fiery darts, fiery darts, fiery darts. The enemy is trying to attack the people of God's mind. He's trying to attack our bodies. He's trying to destroy families. He's trying, he's maybe t attacking finances, maybe just attacking your stuff. Amen. But this is why you intercede. I can tell you so many stories. When I was in uh, Colorado Springs, one of my patients at the time, uh, she had invited me to church and we began to get close. She was a sweet lady, sweet old lady. And um, God woke me up, I think about like two or three o'clock in the morning. And I began to see the spirit of death, like the grim reaper, uh, come into her room. Uh, and it was a taunting her. And I began like, oh my God, like if I don't pray, this lady gonna die. And I knew that her heart uh, ejection fraction of her heart was something low, something like 30%. That's, uh, the ejection fraction is like how well your ventricles, you have like four chambers of your heart, two atriums on top and the ventricles at the bottom, how well her ventricles can pump blood to the rest of the body. It was only 30%, you know, ejection fraction. So I knew like her heart was weak. So God woke me up maybe two or three o'clock in the morning and I began to see the spirit of death in her room. So what did I do? I began to pray. I began to pray. I prayed. I prayed. I prayed. I began to rebuke the devil. Everything. So I saw that, that death spirit leave out of her room. Yeah, God bless you, Apostle Blair. And, it, 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 uh, and I, I prayed until I saw it flee from her house. Um, and I was like, oh my God. So come to find out this lady that I was seeing, I didn't know she was sick again in the hospital. I didn't know that the doctor put, um, you know, one of those, uh, you know how the doctors make those diagnoses, like you only got like two months to live. I didn't know the doctor gave her that, but she stood up in church. We had a testimony service. She said, yeah, I just got discharged from the hospital and, you know, my, my injection fraction of my heart went up. I think it was 30%. It went up to like 50 or 60%. Amen. So I believe that my intercession that night had something to do with that amen so you don't know how powerful your prayers are how powerful your intercession is when you stand in the gap for someone and be a good steward over some of the things that god shows you amen there's, there's so much amen that god wants to show us there's so much that god wants to release to us but can you be a good steward over the information I say, okay, God, I'm going to stand in the gap. I'm going to pray for your will, for your agenda to be done in this earth. I'm, I'm going to pray that your will will be done in this earth. All right, so I'm going to give you some biblical examples of intercession. All right, Daniel the prophet, you know, the mighty, mighty prophet of God, he interceded for his nation, you know, so they can be forgiven for their sins we see this in daniel chapter 9 daniel chapter 9 verses 3 and 5 you know they were in exile uh in daniel he was reading the prophecies of jeremiah he had the whole scroll the whole you know the standing in the gap and praying it out amen this is why god will speak to us sometimes uh and uh show us certain things so we can pray his will to be done i don't care what you see right now if you got a prophecy, if you got a word from God over your life or over the circumstance, you need to be praying that out. You need to be interceding. You need to be standing in the gap. Amen. Daniel, he prayed so hard uh, that the archangel Gabriel came uh, and, and, and he had a visitation from this angel. And he began to explain to him some of the things, some of the answers that he was seeking God for. So prophets and just people on here that fivefold ministers amen people of god you know you need to be praying you know there's a uprise of the there's so much confusion when it comes to gender the devil is a liar it shouldn't even be like that you know confusion in the clothing for men i'm tired of seeing men in these dresses and 
rumpers and skinny jeans and pocketbooks. It's just so much to pray for. Boys wearing makeup. Like, come on. One of the one of these little boys at my daughter's school, my husband will tell you, up here wearing makeup. There's so much to pray for. You know, we're called to pray for this land. It's, I always say this is a wicked and perverse generation. You know, they're saying, they're calling evil good and they're calling good evil. And it's just, it's just so much to pray for again. All right, so we need to be praying. You have so many children dying. Uh, we need to be praying for the, a region, whatever you're called to. You can be in a little countryside and may need to be praying for that countryside. You can be in a big city, you need to be praying for your city. You know, we need to be praying for this nation. There's so much so much chaos, so much confusion, and we know God is a God of order. You know, we need to be praying for our household. You know, many people, you go out there and try to save the world, but what about your household? You know, I, I don't even feel right if, you know, if, if I get in an argument or something going on in my household, I'm not going to be going on here and trying to minister. I need to make sure this thing is right with my family first, you know. We need to, especially PK kids, you know, we need to make sure our kids are good. We need to make sure our household is in order, you know, because lives are depending on us. Lives are depending on us. Amen. So people are pen depending on your intercession. Just like I told you guys, I had this vision of the pregnant lady, you know, or the lady that just had a baby, you know. She was praying in tongues at the time she repented before God, you know, but I was able to pick her up in the spirit so she didn't commit suicide i know how it feels to be chronically depressed when i went to my season in the wilderness uh many of you guys know this i was chronically depressed i laid on my couch for three days three days i laid on my couch i didn't want to live i didn't comb my hair i didn't brush my teeth i didn't do nothing one thing i just did was go to the bathroom get back on the couch just depressed heavy and I, be, and I begin to see things in the spirit. I begin to see shadows, like dark shadows, brown shadows. I didn't even care. I was like, whatever. And I was, I believe I was seeing demons. Yeah, all of my books are prayer books. I've written eight, uh, eight, 18 books. My 18 books are getting ready to be released soon. All right. Um, all of my books are prayer books. I begin to see demons. And, you know, coming in my room, I didn't even care. I rolled over. I said, God, I don't want to live no more. Kill me now. And... Uh, 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 intercessor, you know, she called me and then she said, Kim, and she's like, and I, and I, at first I didn't want to answer the phone, but I heard the voice of God. He said, answer that phone. So I answered the phone and it was an intercessor. She's like, Kim, she's like, I see demons in your house. And she prayed. She, she stood, she just went in on me. She prayed and she, she saw it leave my house. You know, she said, she told me exactly what I was seeing. And she could not know this except by the, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. She said she saw demons. They had nails that was going like this. Cha -cha 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 -cha, you know, like nails like that. And they were taunting me. They were dancing around me. So she prayed till she saw it leave. And immediately I felt peace. You know, but I was like, God, I feel better. But I just so depressed. I don't want to live no more. So I began to pray. And God said, it's not your time to die. You got work to do. So I thank God for intercessors, amen, that's able to pick up how somebody feels. See, a lot of us, we have people interceding for us. Uh, I think, um, I think it was Lester Sumrall. Um, he said that maybe he was overseas somewhere and he almost died. I think he fell off, maybe a horse or something like that. And at that moment when he was, he was bent over sick, you know, I'm about to die, an intercessor across the world uh, picked him up in the spirit. God told her to pray, to pray for him. And she did, and uh, they end up getting together. She ended up confirming the exact time, you know, of that encounter when he was sick in his body. Um, the spirit of death was upon him. And she was like, yeah, God told me to intercede for you. So we need your, inter we need your prayers. We need you to intercede. Amen. So, you know, Jesus, and Jesus is our ultimate example, you know, he interceded for his followers. The prayers of Jesus, when he prayed, amen, when he came in the flesh and dwelt among us, they are being felt today. 
He knew exactly how to pray. See, your prayers intercessors, sometimes they impact generations. And I'm going to tell you why I'm saying this. Because in John 17, I want you to write this down. Study it. Study it. In John 17, when you look at verse 11, Jesus prayed for us to be loyal. We need loyalty right now in the body of Christ. Because some people are quick to just run from covenant to covenant, break covenant. They they got like 10, 15 different spiritual parents, you know, every every year. I'm in transition. I'm in transition. So Jesus, when he was in, he came in the flesh and dwelt among us, he prayed for us to be loyal. Think about that. You know how long ago that was? Jesus, he prayed for us to be joy-filled. In verse 13, John 17, verse 13, look at this. This is the power of intercession. We need to be joyful or joy-filled in, in this walk because we're going to go through. We're going to suffer. We're going to go through many trials and many tribulations. So Jesus, he prayed for us to be full of joy. Isn't that awesome? Jesus prayed for us to be safe from the evil one, the devil. And in verse 15, John 17, verse 15, write this down. You know, and I thank God, I thank, I thank God that Jesus interceded for us to be protected from the devil. Because some of the things that we're called to do, you know, we're, we're not going to be able to do it effectively if you don't have God's protection. You know, witches are following some of us. Witches are coming to some of our meetings. Witches are trying to... Uh, come in our rooms and all kind of crazy stuff people trying to put curses and pray against us we need god's protection so jesus prayed this to over two thousand years ago for us to be safe from the evil one look at it john 17 verse 15 jesus prayed for us he interceded for us to be ready for service some of us don't want to be processed some of us we want to quit you know, when things get hard, but he prayed for us 2,000 years ago to be ready for service. Isn't that awesome? In verse 17, John 17, 17, Jesus prayed for us to be united in the body because he knew, you know, you know, especially the religious folks, the church folks, you know, the, those people that are super religious. You know, they always want, they, 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 they can't recognize the kingdom. They can't recognize uh, a move of God. They're stuck in the traditions of men. Um, and it's sad. You know, Jesus wept because they missed their hour of visitation. That, that's so sad. So he prayed 2,000 plus years ago that there will be unity in the body in verse 21. Amen. John 17, 21. You cannot tell me that intercession is not needed. You cannot tell me that we need to come into the knowledge of his glory. Some of us, we, we never felt the fire of God before. We never had an, a visitation from Jesus. Amen. But he, he prayed this 2,000 plus years ago that we can have a knowledge of his glory, that his glory will be revealed to us. And the last one, that his love will be revealed in our hearts. That his love will be in our hearts. You can't say you know God or you can't say you love God if you're full of hate. Somebody's lying. Amen. God is love. Uh, it's a scripture that says they will know that we are his disciples if we have love for one another. So Jesus prayed this in John 17 verse 26. That if we have his love in our hearts. Come on. This is the power of intercession. My husband's book, Get Traumos' book, The Power of Intercession. Amen. It's an awesome book. Amen. I read it and I was like, wow. I read that book in like maybe an hour or two hours. Just read, I couldn't put it down. Amen. And when I read the book, I was stared up like, man, I, I want to pray more. Amen. So Jesus prayed. When he prayed, his prayers impacted generations and his prayers are still being felt today. Amen. Right now. So imagine. If you tell God, yes, I'm going to stand in the gap. If you tell God, yes, imagine how your intercession can impact the next generation. Talk about your great, 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 great grandchildren. Amen. All throughout the scriptures. And I'm reading out of uh, 
my new book the abcs of the prophetic prophetic characteristics i got great uh feedback on, upon it and man this is my third book on the prophetic ministry many people just feel like um prophets all they do is prophesy they focus on the gift but not character amen and they end up getting into witchcraft or divination but god has me stuck on character god has me stuck on lifestyle amen because holiness when you begin to have a level of holiness in your life everything's going to come you're going to have a power the power of god i'm talking about the bona fide power of god in your life and demons are going to be afraid of you some of you guys you're trying to cast out the devil but the devil ain't budging he ain't going nowhere because you're filthy you're dirty you're contaminated and god wants us to live right he wants us to be holy you can't cast out the devil you know using the devil or his methods you can't cast out a devil using his methods some of us is nasty in the attitude god wants us to get delivered so i teach lifestyle and and a level of holiness amen um and it's going to make you uh even more bona fide prophet so intercession moses and it's, it's, if this is blessing you, let me know if this is blessing you. Amen. Ooh, I, notice, I notice a lot, and this is on the heart of God. Amen. Because God longs to talk to us. Amen. Have you ever uh, just been in that place, and then you write down, like, notes of stuff? Like, I remember one time, it was just like a river. do 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 God was just pouring in me, pouring in me. I had to stop, and I had to get... Just right, 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 right. I had this long prophecy, this long prophecy. I'm like, wow. You know, and we need to get back to that place. We need to get back to that place where we're hearing the voice of God. Or God is trusting us with information. And some of us, and I just want to pray, amen. And I don't want to give you everything in one day, amen. I really want you to get the book, amen. Um, some of us need to get back in that place where we can hear the, the voice of God again. Amen. Some people on here right now, you're, you're feeling depressed or discouraged because you're saying, God, I might hear you anymore. God, you know, you're not speaking to me. Did I do something wrong? You know, we need to get back in that, that, that place. Amen. We need to get back in our prayer closet because what you do privately, God will bless you publicly. Amen. You know, prayer, it should be the backbone of everything a lot of us are doing things without seeking the face of god first i've been guilty of that you know we, we we're connecting with the wrong people uh we're connecting with the wrong business uh the wrong ministries but if we would have prayed first and waited on god sometimes you might not get your response right away but if you stay faithful in that god will send you confirmation or a warning if you would have prayed to God, you wouldn't have that heartache. You wouldn't have had that Jezebel encounter. You wouldn't have had that Ahaz spirit or the Absalom spirit. You wouldn't have had none of that. Amen. And it starts in prayer. It starts in, in, in prayer. Um, so Moses, he interceded for Israel. You know, when you look at Exodus 32, 11 and 13, he interceded for Israel. Because God trusted him with a nation. Can God trust you with a nation? Can God trust you? Are you being a good steward right now over your uh, your city? Can God trust you? You know, God revealed, you know, his plans to Moses before he acted upon it. You want to get that close with God, that you want to be a friend. God said, should I tell my servant what I'm getting ready to do? Should I tell him? What I'm getting ready to do. Amos 3, 7. God does nothing in the earth unless he first reveal his secrets. Come on. To his servants, the prophets. It's our job. Come on. It's our job, prophets. To stand in the gap. It's our job to be a watchman in the spirit. You know, and, and to cover our nation in prayer against destructions, against the attacks of the enemy. It's our job. Some people say, I'm a watchman, I'm a watchman. But you've been asleep. Watchman, wake up. 
get back on your posts because you don't want that blood to be on your hands a man counter you know um she tried to come in like my room i saw her face at three o'clock in the morning i felt evil an evil presence i woke up and i saw her face in the spirit and i saw a jar with some bugs i was like is she trying to put a spell on me so i began to rebuke it and then i think a week after that i felt something choking me up in the spirit so uh i had to me and my husband we, we uh prayed and fast rebuked it off we went to uh another man of god's conference and the power of god was strong there and it broke off my life so we have to intercede amen because there's so many attacks of the enemy against us amen so after that encounter i said never again i had to step up my level of 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 consecration i step up my level of fasting and uh, prayer and i was like the devil is a liar will never happen to me again amen so we need to be praying we need to be praying we need to be standing in the gap and then we need to be consistent in prayer amen so god can reveal more of his secrets and his plans to us because the secrets of the lord belong to the righteous they belong to us amen deuteronomy 29 29 write that down you know the secrets of the lord belong to the righteous god has an amazing plan for each and every one of us you need to be interceding why did god show me what the witch was doing because when you're an intercessor god will give you a heads up on the enemy he will show you what the enemy wants to do before he even does it he will show you the witch trying to curse you. He will show you people trying to pray against you. He will show you. So you can thwart the, the plans of the enemy. But how will you ever be able to pick that up in the spirit if you don't pray? If you don't have no relationship with God? If you don't have a connection with God? Amen. So let me just pray um, that we can just go higher in God. Amen. So just lift up hands, everybody. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now for the power of intercession. I pray right now, God, that your will be done in our life, your kingdom come, Lord God, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, I pray right now, God, that we can stand in the gap, that we can be a watchman in the spirit, that you can take us higher and, and take us higher into deeper realms of intercession, of deeper le levels of prayer and god says my children i am birthed in deeper levels of prayer in your life in this season you're going to receive a burden from me you're going to receive your passion back for prayer and intercession is coming upon you and even right now some of you feel a staring right now a pulling on your spirit you some of you feel the fire of god burning in your belly and god is saying my children uh, I'm going to show you great and mighty things out of my word. I'm going to show you great and mighty things because I trust you. If you're willing to stand in the gap for me, then I'm willing to show you things beyond your imagination, beyond your comprehension. I'm willing to show you new things that's going to manifest in this earth. I'm willing to show you new things that I can trust you with. Will you be a good steward over my secrets? Will you be a good steward over the things I want to bring before you? Will you stand in the gap and pray? Can I send you, says God? Can I sin you cannot trust you with these secrets says the spirit of god amen listen to me lives are depending on your intercession 2000 and i think it was 2004 2005 i got in a car accident i almost died the devil spoke to me i was on my way to go to the strip club to dance because i was just be a stripper and the devil spoke to me. He said, you're going to die today. And I was like, what? And I felt evil. I felt death for the first time. I was like, yeah, right. I shook it off. And then sure enough, you know, maybe an hour later, I was driving down the, the, the car, driving down the street. And it was raining, you know, cats and dogs. And I felt death again in my car. And I got in a bad car accident. I had a four-door sedan. It got smushed to a two-car two door. Uh, two, two, it got smushed in half. It got crushed in the back. You know, if anybody was in my back seat, they probably would have died. And I remember my sister, two weeks prior to the accident, she gave me a Bible. For some reason, I put the Bible on my passenger seat. And I remember I had braces at the time. My braces popped off. I had an eyebrow ring that popped out. You know, I had CDs all scattered across the highway, all scattered with broken glass everywhere. And a firefighter that was 
uh, at the crime scene. He looked at the car and he shook his head. He looked at me like, wow. He picked up the Bible that my sister gave me two weeks prior. He said, here, young lady, this saved your life. But at the time, you know, I had people interceding for me. I had some church people trying to say, Kimberly, please come to Bible study. Please, this lady, I remember this, this church mother. She begged me for like a whole month to come to Bible study. And I just kept on avoiding her like nah i ain't doing it i ain't doing it but then i knew that someone was praying for me you know so that's the power of intercession so after that encounter i repented i got my i got my life right i got saved i got filled with the holy spirit and evidence of speaking in tongues amen and it was a journey from there since 2004 it's been a journey amen a lot of ups and downs trials and tribulations you know a lot of just submitting to god a lot of purging you know but i am here amen and i'm urging you saints to pray i pray i i, I pray i release an impartation for the spirit of prayer upon your life i release an impartation for the spirit of prayer receive it i can't impart what i don't have but i do have the spirit of prayer on my life amen because if i don't pray the glory of god will jack me up and i feel an anointing some of you guys feel the fire of god being released i feel just a wave of glory just hit right now amen and I want to just begin to prophesy a little bit. Uh, and I hear God speaking to me. Somebody that's watching me, you got knee pain. You got pain in your knees. If you get up and move, you're going to be healed right now. Amen. Somebody saying, God, shall I move? Amen. Shall I move? You know, what do you want me to do as concerning uh, um, a moving uh, cir circumstances? God says, wait. He's telling you to wait. I don't know who that's for, but you're, I want to say your name is Amber. Amber. Amen. You're believing God to move. Amen. But God is telling me to tell Amber to wait. Amen. So Charles is watching me. I hear the name Charles. Amen. And you are going through a bad marital tension. Amen. But God is going to bless your marriage. Amen. It's an attack from the enemy. And God is calling you to, to pray for your wife. To pray. Amen. So that's that's what I hear. Amen. But let me pray God's blessings upon you. Uh, God's uh, grace upon you. I pray that this word will steer you up. Somebody said they felt the fire of God upon them. Amen. They felt that. Listen, you guys, join us Monday through Friday, 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We pray in tongues for one hour. We take our communion daily, and I give the word of the Lord, all right? And you can go to my website, prophetessk.org, and get all the prayer time and all the information. Um, join us today at 12 o'clock, 12 noon. We're going to be praying. It's going to be an awesome time. We're going to be praying uh, daily prayers that bring changes. Your life is going to shift. Uh, I, I do open up sometimes. God tells me to prophesy. Uh, people get, get, get healed, uh, delivered. People's lives are transformed. Amen. I don't want to pray and not see fruit. Amen. And I see fruit. Got so many testimonies. I have not even posted yet. Amen. So join us. Your life is going to shift. Um. Uh, august not august lord my mind's cutting off lord <laughs> when i begin to prophesy when i begin to prophesy my mind cuts off lord you guys january uh january uh next month on the, the 19th i will be in george excuse me girl town georgia it's right next to augusta I put the flyer on my, my page. It's a woman's luncheon empowerment. It's like a $20 registration fee. Don't let that stop you from getting what you uh, need from, from the Lord. Amen. If you believe in the anointing in my life, amen. If you want me to minister, lay hands, prophesy in your life, come and. Um... I love this. Rob Jackie says she has knee pain. Huh? Rob Jackie says she has knee pain. Oh, okay. Somebody on Facebook said they had knee pain. Okay, Rob, Jackie, get up and move. Amen. I break the knee pain off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Get up and move. I send forth the fire of God. And let us know if the pain is gone. Let us know. Somebody on Facebook is getting healed. Uh, God said knee pain. Amen. So um, I just called it out. But I know, I know it was an Amber that wants to move. And I know it was a Charles that's watching. You have problems in your marriage, amen. Um, that's what that's what I that's what the Lord put in my mouth to, to release, amen. Uh, School of the Prophets classes start next uh, next month. Three months training. I can't wait. If you love the teaching I did, if you want more in debt teaching, uh, sign up School of the Prophets. We're gonna go more and beyond, amen. Um, write a chapter. Uh, I got a, a new book that's being launched, amen, and I want to uh, give other people more exposure, give them some training in books, and just have a partnership going on, uh, write a chapter, and uh, the name of the book is called It Cost Me Everything. 
and if you go to my website you see the list of things we're going to write and we're going to cover and many lives are going to get saved and transformed i can't wait there's awesome benefits coming out of that if you want to bless the ministry go to prophetsk.org cash app dollar sign prophet is kim amen and rob jackie are you are you healed let us know if the pain is gone she says she's moving right now all right let us know if the pain is gone I mean, somebody's getting healed on uh, Facebook. Did somebody hurt their elbow on the uh, left side? Yes, I'm telling you. See, people don't realize, like, sin will cost you everything, you know. Uh, but we're going to talk about God's redemption power as well, redemptive power as well. Lord God, I just thank you, God, for her healing to manifest now. I break the stubborn pain off of her in Jesus' name. Let us know. I feel the fire God in my left knee for you, Jackie. Let us know. I break the stubborn pain right now in Jesus' name. It's feeling better. Wow. Look at God. Healed in the name of Jesus. Look at that. So Jackie said, the pain in her knees is feeling better. She said, wow. She's feeling better in the name of Jesus. She said healed. She said she's healed. Excuse me. She said she's healed in Jesus' name. Now I give God praise. Woo! I thank God for that. Amen. So join us today at 12 if y'all want to pray. We're on the line every day, Monday through Friday, praying. Amen. All right. I love you guys. Uh, I'm going to see you soon. God bless.